Welcome to Legal Meets, a look at legal beyond the law, a podcast by Legal. On this episode of Legal Meets, we meet Tom Martin, founder of Foresight Legal Group, and more recently, Lawdroid, an exciting Facebook messenger app designed to help entrepreneurs solve their legal problems. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Legal Meets. I'm Steve Kiasi, your host, and I'm joined today by Tom Martin, the Law Droid. <laughs> How's it going, Tom? It's going great. Thanks for joining us today. And you're sitting where? <laughs> Which city are you in today? today? I'm, sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting in North Vancouver. Okay, it's hard to keep track of you these days. You're a very busy man. So um, we've, we finally got you in, in one place sitting still, but I just wanted to kind of uh, give the view, the listeners uh, a feel for the, the Tom Martin away from the legal world for a second. And uh, just wanted to ask you, and it's the way we start most of the uh, podcast, but if you had TED Talks get in touch with you t- today and say, look, Tom, you can give a talk, but it can't be about legal. What would you talk about? Is there any hidden passions or any hidden talents that you'd, you'd like to share with the world? Oh, man. Um... You know, one of the things that I always tell people when I, I do a talk about legal tech or AI or something like that is uh, in the intro, I tell them, you know, I'm a, I'm a Yale philosophy major. And uh, <laughs> I think that's kind of where, um, you know, where I start from. Like, that's what uh, my passion is, is kind of like the conceptual part of it. You know, why are things the way they are? Um, just you know, reflecting on things and thinking about where we are and where we want to go. So it wasn't just a pickup line. <laughs> well, it used to be. It used to be. <laughs> but, you know, I'm married now. So. Okay, all right. <laughs> but so there's a philosopher in the background and, um, and that's yeah. kind of, does that, uh, I guess, bleeding to all the other um, elements of your life and, and all the things you're working on? I think so. I mean... For example, with Lodroid, the the interest in that partly is commercial, you know, but the other part of it is about what 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 the possibilities are and how this can fundamentally change people's relationship to the law, uh, because it's been up to date a very kind of exclusive um, relationship or exclusive service for people, and you know how would things be if you could fundamentally pull that wall down and have justice for everyone, I think things would be quite different. Well, it seems to be a common thread in a lot of the, the projects that you've worked on in the past, and we'll get to that in a second, but what was the initial uh, moment for you that made you want to be a lawyer? So you went from philosophy, uh, was that initial uh, initially, or was that uh, after kind of discovering the legal world? You know, I'd love to say that there's some like grand plan or design for this, um, but when I was graduating from 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 university, um, you know, I had a degree in philosophy, and I was thinking, like, what you know, what do I possibly do with this? Like, uh, what is the next step? And to me, law seemed kind of a way of applying philosophy. Like, applied philosophy is when you take um, thoughts about how, how things should be and you apply it in the law. So, to me, that was a natural next step. Okay, and then obviously from there, uh, the access to justice uh, theme, which has been quite prevalent in a lot of the work that you've touched and what you're actually working on today as well. Um, that's nothing new. Uh, you've been working on that for a while and also uh, you, you're not a, um, a spring chicken to, uh, to legal tech either. So you're a bit of an old school warrior in that sense. Uh, started coding uh, quite early on. So it seems like most lawyers get buried in the day-to-day, in the minutiae, and kind of, you know, obviously what it's like to run a practice and whatever else, but you've been able to kind of, um, you know, drive some other initiatives. Uh, you're working on an ABA initiative as well on, on the side in your spare time. Um, so where did that come from? Where did the, the drive behind all that, like what, what, what's been the impetus to kind of uh, push you towards access to justice uh, continually? Yeah, you know, I, I was thinking about that question. Like, where does that drive come from? And I'm not really sure. I mean, (laughs) 
Is it possible you just a good, of... is it possible you're just a good person? <laughs> that that, that can't be the, that can't be the answer. <laughs> Tell me that, right. <laughs> um, but you know, from my parents, that's that's a big motivation. You know, my uh, parents were always into um, you know social justice. What was what the right thing to do is. Um, that was always a big part of my life growing up. Um, I went to an all boys Catholic high school and, um, like community, um, service and, uh, you know, doing things to be helpful to, to others was like a big thing. So I think it just got, part of that became a part of, 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 of you at DNA. Yeah. And so when I went out there, um, I think like a lot of lawyers, you know, the initial motivation was to help people, and you hear that, and it's very trite, but that is that is how it started. And despite the fact that I've had, you know, a lot of real-world opportunities that can make me cynical about it, um, I think that's, you know, that's where a lot of this is still coming from on these projects that, that, um, that we're talking about. Yeah, it's funny, going back to the day-to-day, -day, when you talk to um, most lawyers, and again, I'm, I'm not a lawyer myself, but... Um, becoming increasingly familiar with lawyers all in all walks of life all around the world, whether it's working on technology. Um, and that's the underlying theme. And, you know, it's, you know, part of the reason why I ask it is that we really want to find out if that's still kind of there, right? Because it's, it's a good reminder. Because um, I think most people get into to, to, to legal services or become a lawyer to actually help people. And you can, that can get lost uh, quite easily, right? You can become, like you said, jaded or cynical, whether it's the system <laughs> or it's, you know, uh, injustice. Um, so... Uh, interesting to hear that yeah. you know that's how it all came together for you, and so um, again going back to the early days of even you know legal technology, um, you, you kind of spent some time coding back when the websites uh, were something new to lawyers. Um, uh, they might still be new to lawyers now, but basically in, in the past you you were um, you know working on HTML, CSS. Is that is that right? Yeah, I mean the, the bare bones fundamentals, you know, like child's play like what, what kids are learning in school right now right, okay. um, <laughs> you know like uh, third or fourth graders but at the time it was just I think like when I was a kid you know I, I used to take things apart to try to figure out how they worked and you know back in 98 99 um, you know I was going in there and source coding like all of the websites to figure out oh well they're using these tags or you know, this is how forms work, um, you know, and, and just trying to figure out how it works and then reading what you could find to make sense of it. And then uh, I coded my own website for my wife and I where we had like all of our wedding pictures on there awesome. uh, with friends and stuff. And so, you know, it was just tinkering. So was that childlike fascination, that curiosity that, that drove you uh, to kind of just find out more? Yeah, and I think you know that's it's it's a good thing, and sometimes not. Um, I've constantly had that throughout my life, like a, a curiosity about things, and and playing with stuff and tinkering. And I think the the downside of it is sometimes you can get carried away in, <laughs> in a bunch of different you know new ideas, and um, it can you know, be a rabbit hole. Right? <laughs> yeah, it, it can be. Okay, cool. And so, um, in, in the past, you've also um, again tried your hand uh, at, a, at a marketplace style um, uh, legal platform. So that was Law Deal. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. Well, um, yeah, Law Deal. The concept was uh, to have attorneys on one side, you know, consumers on the other, offer flat fee services, like let's say incorporation. And lawyers would just offer it at different price points based on their experience, and uh, you know, education and and um, and their our, their their rates. And no, I mean, nothing like that had been done at the time. Um, and we we had my, my co-founder, by the way, was uh, Alan Rodriguez, and he um, was an executive who had worked at um, LegalZoom. Right. And a, and a good friend and he he's an amazing uh, guy when it comes to just energy for life and uh, being a great marketer too so you know I worked with him to put this thing together and getting lawyers signed up was like was not an issue because the you know when you present the opportunity 
to get work and get paid for it. Everyone's that's uh, they're, they're all happy with that scenario, but it's more obviously yeah. the, the, the the clients convincing them to come online and and to, it was probably early in that sense. Yeah, it was pretty early because 2012, you know, um, there wasn't a lot of uh, capital interest in in legal tech, and to make something like that work, um, it, you know, the the type of advertising and marketing that would be required would be really substantial, and so that I mean, organically, there wasn't a whole lot of interest on the side of consumers in that. And if we had to do the advertising and marketing, we definitely need to do a round. It had to and, be a large uh, scale um, project. Yeah, but the proof of concept was there, um, and it was a good product. It's just that it was a little early a little for the early. marketplace. All right, and that kind of obviously uh, tied into your uh, previous relationship with LegalZoom. So I, I guess your day job is still. Um, is that true? Is, it, is that uh, Foresight Legal is your day-to-day uh, -day kind of, um, uh, you're still your number one, uh, or Law Droid would be a new baby, but um, is, is Foresight still your day-to-day -day job? Yeah, it's my day job. Okay. And in, in Foresight Legal. Yep, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so Foresight Legal is, is the law firm and, uh, you know, I work with a couple of paralegals on that and a few lawyers that support me. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, it's a day-to-day. And so, in the past, that um, again, you were quite early to, to the um, to the mix. Again, um, you know, seeing a common thread, that you're kind of a, a legal pioneer here, um, and you were doing uh, work with LegalZoom. Obviously, I think in the prenuptial um, uh, agreements, is that something that at that time was pretty radical as well? Obviously, LegalZoom was uh, causing a big disruption and providing access to justice <laughs> in a sense, but it would have been a new uh, innovation. Yeah, no, it was definitely an innovation at the time, and not not only LegalZoom providing, um, you know, online legal uh, services, but having this hybrid product, right? That was the online legal services plus you know attorney support that had never been done, um, and so it was. This was back two thousand nine. Wow. Yeah, and um, so I developed it with them, and we got it out there. And essentially, they were doing the marketing because they had they have so much traffic and so much name recognition. So I was providing the service end of it, and I had about about 15 lawyers at the height of it across the country that were working with me. And so we would get the information, um, close the client, close the, them into clients. And then service them and provide the prenuptial agreements, and so it was you know it was a virtual law firm that I was <laughs> running at the time, mm. but um, it was kind of before that was something that was really a thing. Yes, yeah, so it's interesting to see. Obviously, uh, early to the virtual law firm game, one of the first in the United States. Early to the websites, um, and now you're uh, you know fair to say one of the first uh, to the legal chatbot um, uh, game. Uh, obviously, a, a new frontier. So um, I'm assuming you know those past experiences were all you know leading up to this, right? Because um, in, in a sense, uh, Law Droid takes a, a bit of all of these scenarios on demand, uh, automation. Uh, you know, maybe a lawyer in the background uh, working there. But tell us, what is Law Droid? Um, you know, I'm glad you you're here in the person today. It's not a robot, so uh, that's that's one good thing. So, <laughs> what, what is Law Droid? Or so you think? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that was my next question. Is, are, are you a sophisticated legal robot sent from the future to kind of you know, create access to justice for everyone? So. Well, you know, just today it, it came out with uh, Facebook and their like VR environments that they're going to have. Right. So that's uh, not far off. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. All right. Awesome. Um, so, yeah. So what, what's, yeah. what's uh, LawDroid? Yeah. So LawDroid is, it's a AI legal assistant. Um, right now, it specifically allows people to create uh, a California corporation by just answering a few questions on their smartphone, um, you know, with a chat bot. So it's done on the, fa so, on the Facebook Messenger platform? Yeah, it's currently on Facebook Messenger um, only. But the current version, it's uh, coded in Python. It's pretty, like, married to Facebook Messenger. Um, but I've spent the past couple of months generalizing it so that... It's a bit more agnostic. Um, yeah, so the actual machinery is somewhat detached from Facebook Messenger, and um, 
also adds in, you know, layers in the ability to have natural language processing and machine learning and um, also looking to add a voice interface. Okay, great. Which I've been I've been playing around with and it's kind of cool. Right, wow. To have okay. like a so, Surrey like uh, device, you know, interface with it. So does that mean someone can potentially uh, incorporate a company very shortly just by talking to uh, a chatbot? The, the, yeah, that'll happen pretty soon. Wow, okay, very uh, exciting. But I, but I just actually had somebody uh, submit their uh, their information to incorporate when I was down at Codex, and so that's a new corporation. So that's pretty cool. Oh wow! Okay, very exciting. So uh, how was the whole Codex experience? You kind of got to share uh, Lord Droid with, I guess, the, the the sharpest legal minds in in the world and discuss <laughs> kind of the future of of bots. How did that all go down? What was the reception like? Um, well, for me, it was like the it was a huge honor, you know. Uh, being invited down to Stanford Law School, um, and by by Roland and Susan, um, to talk about Law Droid was just really cool. And then, you know, the drive in, like the day of, was just like blew my mind because <laughs> I was up here in Vancouver and it's all rainy and, and gray. And then when you drive into Stanford, it's just like these slow green rolling hills with like white cotton clouds and yeah I, I could swear there's some kind of some, some there's some secret startup over there that's created this climate control because every time um <laughs> we go there it's just like picture perfect like the weather's like you know amazing even you know you come in from san francisco and it's like you, know, you got carl the fog and it's miserable and drizzly and then you just kind of get into Palo Alto and then, you know, it's like the Truman Show that the streets are paved like so perfectly and everything's just nice and, you know. It really clean. is. Yeah. It's perfect. And even Codex, obviously, right at Stanford, um, there's this, it's called this, this hallowed turf. Like when you kind of get there, it's, it's really magical. Um, and again, uh, for us coming from Australia, we went to one of the Codex shows, I think it was about two years ago. And that was one of the most uh, remarkable experiences I've had. Um, again, meeting really um, amazing legal tech minds and um, like-minded people so it was a great experience and so did you meet any other chatbots or um, kind of anyone in the same kind of realm uh... well uh, just to be clear it wasn't the you know it wasn't the uh, the conference the codex conference had just happened like the week weekend the week before okay cool. and so this was the week, weekly meeting that they have okay awesome and so yeah so that day was me and uh, Mary Juton who were presenting yeah great. and um, you know the reception. Like there, there was a lot of friendly people. There was some questions I got that were fairly, you know, incisive and critical, uh, in a good way. Yep. But um, you know, there's an interesting um, debate right that's going on right now, and it's one that has to be that has to take place, and it's really about you know what are the limits of what chatbots should do, or just automation in general, and um, you know, on the critical side, uh, in a good way, uh, my co-founder of Vancouver Legal Hackers, Joshua Lennon, is uh, talking about, you know, exactly that. What what should we do? What shouldn't we do? And, um, you know, I agree there has to be limits and, and safety measures uh, built into it. But um, I really think that we shouldn't let the perfect be the enemy of the good and that there's a lot of good this stuff can do. And so that that's obviously um, the path you've taken with this project is like you, you like a true startup. You just wanted to get this thing up and running, get it out. And now again, you know, you're kind of heading to voice, uh, machine learning, all kinds of doors are opening up. But again, there's the ethical yeah. um, undertones and kind of it's a whole new world, right? So you, you kind of just take it day by day and try and try and bash down another wall. But obviously, the access to justice thing is something that probably just resonates with you constantly because you're talking about um, you know, like you said, the good. And there's so many people that, that can't access legal services. Um, and, you know, hopefully projects like yours are actually putting a dent into that and, and opening up new doors and giving access to people that previously couldn't um, access it. So is that what you're finding? There's that the receptions, obviously, you know, there's a new frontier that this is helping and it's good. But hey, how are we going to control it? Uh, where are the lines um, ethically? Yeah, definitely. That's where it's at right now. And what I think is really encouraging is to see so many other people doing this and they're doing lots of great things. I mean, you have Joshua Browder, you know, with, um, now assisting, you know, refugees. Yeah. Went from um, parking to refugees, right? So, yeah. So that's pretty amazing. And then you have VisaBot where they're, um, you know, helping immigrants 
and over 50,000, so like an amazing amount of traction. Um, wow. And, you know, Robot Lisa out of the UK and Lawbot. Yeah, we had to so, see uh, Lightfoot on the on, the, on Lego Meets earlier. Yeah. So it's 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 a lot of great things, and it's just a matter of finding what the good what a good balance is. So is that is that um, the case? I mean, you're you're a lawyer yourself. You've had a successful law firm, and again, you've adopted many, I guess, uh, nascent models where it's working remotely, virtually. Um, now with you know the advent of platforms, um, whether it's e-discovery platforms, machine learning platforms, Ross, uh, and the like, is it a case of those platforms should just be assisting lawyers? Do you see it? Is it disrupting lawyers as well? Where does that kind of <laughs> balance lie? You knew, you knew what I was going to ask. So. <laughs> yeah. The unfortunate reality is that the momentum of our system is that it's going to do everything that it can to maximize profit. And to do that, it's going to eat a lot of jobs including professional jobs. There's this great book called, um, well, great, you know, is a question mark there, but there's a good book <laughs> by uh, Andy Kessler, you know, Eat People. Yeah. Um, and it's really about the fact that our economy in a way is about optimizing itself through the elimination of jobs. And that's definitely where we're heading. Like I see through, through the next 10 years that there's going to be a major disruption in the economy that is going to put a lot of people out of work. And it's going to be this weird situation where you're going to have a lot of unemployment where people are trying to figure out their, the, the, like the new place yep. that they have in the economy. But ultimately quality of life should be improving, right? So that's the, the whole the, 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 um, paradigm. That's, that's the paradigm and the hope. Yeah. But in the meantime, there's going to be people that are just you know, practically sitting there um, trying to figure out what the next step is. And it's going to be a harsh um, reality. But, you know, th there are going to be jobs, but we don't know what they are yet. Yeah. And, that, and that's, you know, and that's the, the again, the, the feedback that um, I'm, I'm sensing from, you know, both lawyers and technologists in the legal world uh, as it is, is there's going to be either more jobs or just different jobs um, uh, or well it can go either way so you have uh, sorry more jobs or less jobs and then possibly uh, most likely obviously with technology you're going to have different jobs whether it's blockchain smart contracts you're going to have a lawyer working with a coder or a lawyer that's a coder like you know um, like yourself right. kind of analyzing um, a, a smart contract for um, you know discrepancies and, and code flaws so um, that's obviously going to happen, but you know, there's talks of, uh, basic income, you know, trials right. in the U S and Sam Altman kind of obviously, uh, you know, these things have been done throughout the years, I think in Switzerland and, uh, there's a whole town that just got basic income and everyone was happier. Um, they were still productive and working on things they loved. So, um, it's very interesting again. Um, and the chatbots, uh, Facebook Messenger as a platform, all, all these things are going to come into our lives more, you know, in the morning I'm getting my news now, you know, talking to a, to a chat bot. Um, and for me, it was like, okay, how different is this experience? But then I've um, also played with LawDroid. And again, uh, for a company corporation, I think it's the best way to do it right now. So and does that feed into to, to lawyers as well? Does that feed into a lawyer in the background that if they need, uh, if the consumer needs extra help or something falls outside the, the scope of LawDroid, is there a, a lawyer waiting? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely can. Um, so when, when somebody goes through LawDroid, there's like, there is a path where you can go where it's completely free. Um, but if you want to do, if you want to opt into us like filing it for you or, uh, you know, being the registered agent for service to process or, you know, any extras, then they would pay for that. Um, and one of them includes getting a consultation with a, with a lawyer. Okay. And so know, is, so the, is, is the idea then to obviously expand the scope of LawDroid, not only into different practice areas, but also obviously different services within those? Yeah, definitely. I mean, incorporation was just, it, to me, it seemed like a very neat, um, you know, niche to, to go into because it's, you know, it's incorporation. It's not L, it's not limited liability companies, but corporations and then within California. And then because it being on Facebook, I could really, you know, um, 
focus demographically on that uh, segment of people, and then to expand that um, out towards the other 49 states. Oh, that's awesome. But also beyond that, to look at other services okay. like uh, you know landlord, tenant, or divorce. Yeah, beautiful. So um, yeah, I guess Lisa as well. That platform, um, you know, Chrissy was focusing on non-disclosure ag agreements. I guess the right. you know somewhat um, more cross-jurisdictional than other kind of documents. And again, um, it's got a clear, defined path. So decision trees and things can kind of help. So that's uh, that's awesome. And so, what's your long-term vision for this baby? What's the uh, what, 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 what I mean. Um, is this a law firm of the future? Is it basically um, is is a law droid that first uh, frontier that you know a client will interact with digitally online, getting legal help in their life? I think it will be in the not too distant future. I think whenever anybody's going to need help, there's going to be some kind of automated um, agent that's going to be walking them through like the very like preliminary questions, like do you. Do you need this? Do you need that? And then lean, lean them towards an LLC or a corporation or maybe some other way of organizing their business. Or like if it's a divorce, you know, um, is this kind of divorce that's going to take a long time or is it going to be uh, less complex, you know, and what are the factors that go into determining that? Like basically you're going to have, and the thing about Lodroid is the fact of doing it, you know, I've been contacted by other lawyers who have seen what I've done. And they've taken an interest in how, you know, the technology and what I've done can help them, you know, like what kind of projects they would have. And so one that's come up as a bit of interest is creating that exactly what you're talking about, that kind of front door where this is the person, this is the agent that kind of initially qualifies the client, provides the information back to the lawyer, and then the lawyer can choose to engage further with that uh, potential client or not. So like most technological decisions, I guess uh, a lawyer needs to make um, in the not just distant future, like right now, it's do I want the technology to be um, disrupting me or you know, am I going to empower myself and leverage that? So that sounds like another use case where a lawyer can say, you know what, let me do the, the, the creative work, let me do the kind of the value driving work, um, but you know, um, let me, again, it eats up jobs, but let me get rid of the day-to-day um, the -day kind of repeatable uh, work that I don't necessarily want to do in the first place. Let maybe a bot um, that's you know getting smarter and smarter with every client services um, handle that. So uh, is it, that's where it's going. Okay. All right. So what does that mean for access to justice on the whole? What, what do you see is kind of um, making the biggest difference? Um, you know, I think Sam Glover himself is uh, trying to dig deeper into the eighty percent figure to see how accurate it is. But um, yeah. You know, I see it as a pretty consistent number because in the developed world, whether you're talking um, Canada, Australia, UK, it seems to be the common number uh, popping up. So four out of five people have a legal issue and uh, can't get access to a lawyer. So um, chatbots, um, you know, what else? Like, what does this access to justice number look like to you in the next five to ten years? Is it, is it um, you know, coming down significantly, hopefully? But what, what are the, the means that are going to... Um, you know, reduce that percentage? I think the number one problem that's been identified as the bottleneck here isn't so much the access to lawyers or legal services generally, but it's, it's the fact that people aren't identifying the problem as a legal problem. You know, so that speaks to education and speaks to um, an understanding of what kind of problem it is. And so I think the issue with lawyers is that we tend to get involved m very late in the process. You know, it's like actually become like this drop dead problem where your hair's on fire, right? That's, right, okay. that's where lawyers get it. And the way lawyers interact with it is on a very transactional basis because they're like, okay, how do I put this fire out? And that's what they get paid to do is to put the fire out. Well, just like with that fire analogy, you want to take a lot of steps beforehand to even prevent the fire from happening. And so there has to be some kind of relationship and communication that occurs earlier on with people so that they're educated about it being a legal issue, number one, and then number two, how to deal with it proactively so it doesn't become a problem. And that is the kind of unknown thing that hasn't been solved for yet. Yeah, sure, you can make 
you know, lawyers more available or you can uh, make services that basically mimic, mimic lawyers and what they do more available and cheaper. But if people aren't recognizing that it's a legal problem in the first place, you're not going to get them u utilizing it or preventing the problem in the it's first place. So it's almost like the uh, East versus West, um, you know, medicine philosophy where I guess a lot of the Eastern philosophy is around preventative measures. <laughs> That's true. You know, you yeah. don't get acupuncture so you don't get sick, your balances, you know, your chi and whatever mm -hmm. else. But then, um, you know, in, in the US, more likely you're waiting until you kind of, it's too, too late and you're getting, you know, um, a ph pharmaceutical company involved. So it seems like you're, you're talking about more preventative, um, you know, access to information as opposed to just justice. So you, you don't have to kind of get to that um, dire state. Right. All right, awesome. So we've got a few parting shots on here, uh, Tom. Um, we just want to find out, are you uh, on an Android, Windows, or iOS? iOS, of course. Okay. And does that make <laughs> any difference for the, uh, so for people that are, you know, want to go and get some help from Lawdroid, uh, what's the best way to discover that? Is that just get on, um, onto your website or can I do that directly through Facebook or what's the best way to do it? The, I mean, the beauty of, um, of Facebook's chatbots. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, I mean, the beauty of it is that you don't have to worry about cross platform. Like if you have, if you have a phone and it has Facebook on it, you could get on there. And pretty soon it's going to be if you also have have it on Slack or Skype or WeChat or any of those. So wherever you're at, wherever you live, that's where it is too. Okay, awesome. And so apart from your, your phone, what's that one bit of technology that you, you can't uh, live without? Um, if you are not, in fact, a robot. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a hard one. You know, one thing that I've been taking to recently, and this is kind of almost feels old school by comparison to things nowadays, but an e-reader, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, just to have something that is focused on one task. And so when I've been flying around to LA and San Francisco and, and all that, just being able to, to have a focus on one is, thing. Is it know? a, is it a Kindle? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, someone, um, a good friend gifted me uh, a Kindle and, I kind of was like, mm, what am I going to use this for in terms of, I already had the Kindle app on my, I think, iPhone, iPad, wherever else, but <laughs> you're 100% right, just that it's almost that it's a little bit more tactile and kind of probably uh, indestructible, but um, having the, you know, the, the nice soft backlight and whatever else, it just felt like, oh, this is my tool for reading and you can throw it in your bag easier and take it to the beach right. and whatever else. So um, I think you're right, just having that one thing that just feels like it just does that one job, old school, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I hope they don't start trying to shove other features in there. I hope not. It's like the virtual equivalent of having that quiet room in the library. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And so what, what kind of things do you end up reading mostly? What, what's, uh, is it always, is it stuff to get your mind off this, you know, uh, legal technology and whatever else? Or is it a lot of startup kind of orientated books? What do you kind of immerse yourself in? Um, you know, one of them I'm reading right now ha has to do with robots and job job elimination and all right, that. Okay. Well, it's a Martin, Martin, you, right? Martin Ford. <laughs> yeah, so, but getting away from that, um, I always love a great thriller. You know, it's too bad Crichton's gone because I used to love his stuff. It was a favorite. Okay, awesome. Yeah. All right, and so um, is there, uh, apart from the reading, is there a, like a, a daily ritual or something that kind of keeps you sane, whether it's meditating, is it something you kind of return to every day to kind of feel like, yes, I'm Tom Martin? Well, you know, um, the, the ritual that I have is every morning I drive my daughter to school and, um, you know, I take her to school across town here in a little place called Deep Cove and, uh, it's a little elementary school in the woods and, uh, you know, taking her there, having little conversations with her, um, about what's going on, about stuff on the radio, her singing a song, um, and then dropping her off, that's a that, special you know, time that you get to spend. Yeah, that rejuvenates me every day. All right, awesome. So I imagine that's quite inspiring, right? Yeah. All right, awesome. Great stuff. Well, Tom, it's been great uh, getting to know you better. Uh, really exciting um, what you're working on. Again, uh, it seems like you've been a, a legal pioneer through and through um, back before coding was cool. 
back for legal tech was cool. <laughs> so, Stevie, you're <laughs> making me feel old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the one thing that, you know, um, dated you a little bit was, we have to say, yeah, you, you've got this the, right uh, here. Right? Well, not, not, that, not so much that. You, you've got the, uh, possibly the best um, soundtrack to a demo video uh, of all time, which is, um, I think it's All Apologies, isn't it, by Nirvana? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that kind of dated you a little bit, but um, a little bit. definitely for a legal tech kind of a, a video, um, I encourage everyone to go check it out because, again, you've got the song, you get to see uh, Lord Droid in action. But we're, we're very thrilled to have you on the podcast uh, and also excited to kind of um, follow your progress and th- interesting times, um, you know, with chatbots and, and AI, see where it all goes. So wishing you all the luck and uh, stay in touch and hopefully we can get you on for a demo very shortly. Thank you. I really had a blast. Thanks, Steve. Awesome. See you, Tom. Bye. Bye.